This episode, we patronizingly pat and then brush a long piece of 11 meter OSB before mercilessly cutting a hole in it, because why would you not? This series is the story of the new amphibious Arctic vehicle project named Bernard. Building on ideas, skills and questions raised during the Allen lifeboat conversion, as a team we will share all those moments needed to get Bernard up north, onto the ice and making himself useful. It turned out that I got over the regret disturbingly quickly and got to cutting out this 260mm hole as we need to fit something through the gap. The top and bottom edges are now fragile so I can reinforce those with battens in a moment and the board isn't wider as I want to minimise volume. Then, square cutouts at what will be the opposite corners, and since this is likely to live outdoors some of the time, since I seem to fill up every single storage space I have, a good dollop from the same pot of wood-preserving treatment that I've had for half a decade. Now you can instantly see what this is shaping up to be, mostly because you saw the title and thumbnail, rather than through my explanatory storytelling flair. The back and other side can wait for now, as I want to initially test something before heading home in the evening after a day prepping Bernard's mould. We are making a large format, low height, foam hot forming oven. Hot you hear, so we need a new machine. A hard earned £30 spent on Facebook Marketplace got me a blown air 10 kilowatt propane heater and another 15 quid got me some metal ducting. I made a bodge job seal using a metal cable tie and some wrapped fiberglass. Why the duct? Partly to not set fire to the OSB and the other reason I'll explain soon. In yet another neatly delivered packet of logic from me to you, my propane heater needs a propane cylinder. Got an empty one for a tenner online, and then the yard team sell gas cheaply. Luckily the ducting fits through as intended, and I don't think there's a need to air seal the perimeter. I mean, there's going to be plenty of gaps going on. Another gadget. A high temperature thermometer to see what temperature we're getting right at the end of the duct, nearest where the foam board will be. If this gets too hot, the core cell foam could burn with a gleeful toxicity instead of thermoforming, and then everyone dies, which I do prefer to avoid on a good day. Gas on at the cylinder end, and then the process is charmingly simple. Switch on the fan at the base to get the air flowing. By the way, the noise in the background is someone running a non-noise compliant generator and joyfully covering the whole yard with grinding dust. Then the gas valve release button and the spark lighter. Instant ignition, and you keep the valve button down a few more seconds. The temperature rose fast. We sailed straight past the 115 degrees Celsius thermoforming temperature for core cell, and in fact up and over 200 degrees. Now, people of the channel, especially those convinced I never work things through and just bodge things along, I'd asked AI to help me work out the theoretical temperature, not including the losses in the ducting. I know they are in their infancy, but LLMs provide the sort of conversational, multi-source responses that I always found search engines so maddeningly incapable of delivering. Seeing the maths working is fun too, as you can follow the logic and learn. Interestingly, I ran the same prompt twice, and whilst the basis of the answer was encouragingly consistent, the method of working and style of response differed. Fun. Anyhow, probably in the high 100s to around 200 degrees unless you're blowing serious airflow. Better than too little heat, or far far too much. We can work with that. What I cannot work with is the faintly comical AI prompts that YouTube tries to make us use to answer your questions and comments. What insipid, soulless, deviant nonsense. As you people of the channel take time to contribute, my human replies will match your own efforts. And that even goes for the channel's pet troll or whichever one of them is currently not busy eating pizza in their mother's basement. Back to things getting all hot. So yes, the duct end, which was still mostly concertinaed short, is far too hot. The heater regulator is fixed with no way to reduce gas flow. I did want to see how a gap made a difference, and yes, I know this is the open air where all the temperature can quickly dissipate and heat up the boatyard. I settled on about a foot away and let the thermometer stabilise again. A nice satisfying blue hue of healthily burning propane all the way down there. We're now a little up and down depending on the movement of the open air, but a little over 100 degrees. This is more like it, and I hope to use varying the duct length as a control for the temperature. You turn these heaters off by killing the gas supply from the cylinder end and leave the fan on for a few minutes to help cool it. Before that though, I got a sense of whether we're in danger of singeing the OSB at the most vulnerable spot. Not a hint of it. This is mighty OSB and the duct cools almost instantly. I could even use fiberglass to lag a shortened duct to push the temperature further upward. So whilst the next day I readied for a test run with foam, an omen of friendly good luck turned up. No idea where from, but it did seem to like using one of my foam forming plugs for grooming and recreation. Having made sure the cat didn't set up camp where I was about to send in lots of hot air, here's the full size sheet of course cell. 
Each sheet costs well over 100 quid, so cheers to the increasing numbers of you becoming members at varying tiers, and also to those of you contributing one-off gestures. Without all this, this enterprise would cease. By the way, members, the September bonus episode is live, and you should have the link and password. Top tier members likewise should have access to their private page and personalised September video, which prophesies this episode. I've completed the box. I wanted to minimise the volume to make best use of a single heater, and my thinking is thus. Air comes in the middle, one side, and then has nowhere to go but the square holes in the opposite corners. I hope encouraging near uniform flow. This sheet simply needs to be gently curved across the long axis, so a good first trial. Beams under the middle to lift it, and wait along the edges to pull down into a curve. I've decided to extend the duct for now, lest we overdo the hotness and incinerate my precious foam. I've got some heat resistant insulation boards on order, but I thought that just for this experiment, uh, these boards will do. Both MDF and OSB is perfectly fine at the temperatures that we're dealing with here. They won't suddenly uh, burst into flames. If they do, I'm wrong. Who knows what the heat distribution will be? I hope hot or cold pockets don't get trapped in the front corners. Also, it'll heat from the top to bottom, so I'm expecting losses, and for it to be slow to heat the foam through. I know some other people have used direct electric radiant heat, but they have 10 kilowatt electric sources and have ruined and set fire to lots of foam. 20 degrees to get us started, and I did try to balance not opening the roof too often with checking I'm not killing our valuable core foam. 30, 40, still checking. About a minute later the rate of heating is consistent, so I'm optimistic, and this is the exit port temperature. I thought I'd try and see how we're doing near the entrance, and yes I have ordered a second thermometer. The temperature probe rewarmed back from being in the fresh air, and up we go again. It got into three figures, but then stalled. No further. You leave the fan on to let the heater cool down, and that's just going to obviously push through all uh, the air. It won't go stagnant inside there. So this, uh, this will tick down. That's already down at 49. That'll start dropping down back to normal temperature again. So yeah, I couldn't get it really past 100 at that end at the heater end I couldn't really get it past about 70 75 at the exit end these aren't properly insulated top panels they're just loose fitting MDF I was just seeing if I could give it a crack today anyway I think we've learned something interesting okay so with the PIR thermal panels on order we can dismantle the test and see if the foam board shows any signs of thermoforming at all this is a real unknown for me I don't know the behavior of this specialist sort of foam do you get light forming ability 10 or 20 degrees below the recommended temperature and a window of forming above? Or are we talking about a super sensitive range where 5 degrees below 115 you get nothing and 5 degrees above it turns into a mushy putty? I hope not. One thing I do know is that the thermal product label inside one of the MDF sheets, well now it's thoroughly thermally printed. But to the foam. Alas, it was deflatingly clear as I removed the weights that not much had happened. No damage to the leading edge near the duct, but definitely not curved in any way. It's better though than it locally forming around the beams beneath, which could ruin the sheet. And I'm being cautious, but I really do want a little curve in this, helping reduce stress when being pulled down under vacuum onto Bernard's mould. Let's fast forward to a few days later, prepare to be addressed by real Alex as voiceover Alex goes to the pub. Right then, this is going to be my final attempt to use this former to pull the foam into the correct shape. And we're gonna be using some proper insulation foam on top. This is PIR, which has a higher melting or burning point than the temperatures we'll be getting to. Uh, if this doesn't work, I'm gonna to have to come up with an entirely different method of forming my foam, probably using a heat gun, but I'm worried about burning or overheating and melting. And yeah, we'll see. Or I'll just have to spend millions of pounds getting a professional thermo forming company to do it for me. All right, I quite like those clouds in the background, which is why I'm doing this back from the pub, and those slabs of insulation fit on almost as if they've been sourced at exactly the correct size. Yes, there will be minute gaps, but they're easy to wield, and individual blocks can be shuffled back for a peek inside without letting all the air out. Same process as before with the heater and duct. Intriguingly, the length of the duct has less of an effect on the heat emerging from the end than I imagined. Perhaps adding curves and kinks would do so, but to be honest, I'm more interested in getting the oven's temperature up, not down. Turns out that trying to film one-handed, open the gas and hit ignite is tricky, so that's better. I'm also thinking those exit ports are a little large and while certainly encouraging airflow throughout the oven, I reckon they allow too much heat out. People, we have action. Two thermometers this time, near entrance and exit. I'm setting the alarm at 100 degrees here, not as an over-temp alarm, but to let me know when they are both approaching foam forming temperature. 
Okay, so the probe sat in front of the hot duct is already over 100, but the exit port is way down. Let's not panic. As long as the first one doesn't go sky high, it may just be a case of the heat percolating all the nooks, crannies, the stones of the ground and the walls. And so it turned out to be. But what is this? 120 would be getting too hot for the foam. That's the temperature on top of the piece of wood, so it's not going to be the internal temperature, so I'm going to let it go a little bit over. I should have put the probes right into the foam. Yes, wise after the event, young man, but it was time to inspect. It's best to stop too early and then go again rather than overcook it and ruin a sheet. I was using wooden beams to shape the sheet and also to uniformly hold down the long edges where the resistance to bending was greatest. Do we have a curve? Yes, we do. And the 115 to 120 degree forming advice from Gurit clearly has a slight window either side, but I think I need to improve the form of the curve with more accurate battens. Right, two things. The foam has bent a little bit. Uh, it, the spring back has been quite marked, and so I think we're going to have to bend it quite a bit further than it's going to end up being on the mould. Obviously the vacuum will be able to do the final little bit, I just don't want it to have to be cold formed and have the foam really stress as it goes, as it goes around the curves. Um, what I have done though, is done it the wrong way up <laughs> because of the tapers, um, the way that it, it, it uh, curves off at the end where I did the routing. Um, that's where the fabric is going to go down onto the flat bit of uh, laminate and so I am going to have to do it again. That's actually alright because I'm going to do it to a, a greater curve, a greater degree of curve and I'll just do it the other way up this time round. I won't share that with you though because that'll be kind of boring because you've just seen me do that. Anyway, we've gone from completely hopeless to operational. Well done me. Bye. Not so fast, I shall show you more. Specifically that I realized, especially at the air intake end, the thermometer reading air temperature wasn't really that indicative of the foam's lived experience. The perforations in the foam can be used for the probes, and so measuring not air or surface, but inner foam temperature. The initial results were intriguing. Now the exit thermometer is heating up faster. We've learned that the air temperature near the duct is hottest, but the nearby foam is taking longer, presumably due to airflow and the heat not being allowed to pool in the area. No drama, the exit reading stalls on about 120 degrees, and we wait a few minutes for the other end to catch up. Mildly interesting, eh? Well done me. Bye.